So today I'm going to show you guys how to catch crayfish by hand. Um, I used to catch crayfish all the time years ago. I spent about three years of my life doing nothing but bait fishing when I went fishing. And most of that was in the rivers for smallmouth and walleye and stuff like that. I'd use natural baits like halger mites and crayfish. So a lot of times I'd use nets, but a lot of times I'd forget my net. So whenever I'd forget my net, I'd have to catch them by hand. And that's what I'm going to try and show you guys how to do today. The whole idea behind this is you have a rock, say like this rock, and that rock is on top of the ground. Pretend this rock is the ground here. There's a crayfish underneath this rock. So the crayfish is right there. The whole idea is to take your hands, put them beside the rock like this, and then slowly pry up the rock with both hands keeping them flat, move your hands in towards the crayfish in the middle, and then turn your hands up and grab it like that. That's the whole method. So if I was going to show you this with the rock, I'd put my hands flat beside the rock underwater, of course, and I'd slowly move in on each side. Right now my hands are touching, and then I'd just move them together like that and grab the stuff that's underneath the rock and the crayfish will be inside my hands. I'll show you a real example now. Lay my hands next to the rock, pry them underneath, and catch a mad tom. That's kind of weird. <laughs> Let's see if we can get a crayfish this time. Nope, I got a weird little, like, stickleback guy. <laughs> we'll take this rock. No crayfish. This rock. Crayfish. Two of them. And I'll put them in my bucket. Take this rock here. There's one. You want to work your way upstream while you're doing this because uh, you're going to make the water muddy and the muddy water will drift downstream. So if you constantly move upstream while doing this, you'll uh, continue to have clear water to see. Not every rock has crayfish under it, but a lot of them do. So you're going to get a few other things mixed in, but most of them are going to be crayfish for sure. If you see a crayfish just walking around like that one right there, you want to aim for uh, the back of them and kind of lead them a little bit. Like that. Because they swim backwards. I like to go fast because they'll squirt out of the sides if you don't if you don't put a move on your hands. There's a nice one. That's a beauty. Usually get them a lot bigger than this, but in this section of the river, I'm just finding small ones today. I'm up in the shallows in a in a run that's affected by a drought but this will still work for bait fishing. This will work great. There's one. Mostly little guys today. I see you, you're right there. Gotcha. Gotcha. Another little guy. Panfish size. Got him. Small, medium sized one.
There's one. All around the same size today. I usually get bigger ones, but I mean, it's pretty much the same thing either way. Just sometimes you're catching bigger ones, sometimes you're catching smaller ones. So I've been doing this method for a few minutes now, and I've caught about 15 uh, bait fish and crayfish combined. One mad tom, one uh, log perch or stickleback, whatever it is, and then about 13 crayfish. You can see some of them here. This method definitely isn't as fast as the seining method. That method you can catch about 20 crayfish and 30 seconds, but if you forget your scene, this is a really good backup method, and that's why I wanted to share it with you guys.